uh, today on History from Hardware Store, we're actually going to go back and cover a couple of things that we've already done, and just with a little bit of a change. And the plan is, let me see, this is the first thing. This is something that I found I didn't know existed. And I know that when we done the vulcanizing video before, that we had mentioned, or I had mentioned that I seen somebody take a piston and clamp it and actually use it to vulcanize. Well, this is, you know, would be like the earliest style of vulcanizing. Okay, I found this kit, and this is from 1913. This was made by Adamson Manufacturing Company, and it was made in Ohio. But this, uh, as you can see, it says Ford Special Vulcanizer Model M. Now, patent in 1913, this was probably, you know, not too many other vehicles on the road, you know, in all actuality, or not many that other people had seen. So, this was sort of a, a special kit. So this one here is of all of them I've ever seen in the nicest shape. Okay, and what we've got here is the original paperwork. And this company was out of East Palestine, Ohio. Okay, so this is a vulcanizing set just like our the one that we we lit and you know let it burn to try to vulcanize. But this one works a little different. Now this came with a pair of scissors as you can see and this is actually the vulcanizing piece now it's still got some material in the bottom the scissors to cut it with you know when you're alongside the road but it actually there's the information on it so what happens is, is this clamps together with your patch and your tube inside of it this is filled with gasoline and then it's lit and it says it takes about 10 minutes for that gas to burn out and another I think 10 to 20 minutes of sitting for it to cool down uh, yeah, it says remain in place 15 to 20 minutes in the directions so this is another way to vulcanize we're actually going to do this uh, you know this thing it looks like it may have been used maybe once if that really good shape but uh things are made to use so we're going to use it we're going to actually set it back up just like it was supposed to be of course I'm going to use a newer tube probably the same tube that we tried before and we're going to use some of this old vulcanizing material and it may not work and it may work but if it don't work it's not a big issue what we're trying to do is the process we're just showing the process of the of the repair not necessarily the repair because we're working with well, in this case, over a hundred year old stuff. So, very lucky to find this particular one in this condition. And, you know, uh, you could buy a half pound roll for a dollar of the, the patching material or a regular roll for 25 cents. So, uh, this stuff looks like it's got some fiber like cloth with maybe impregnated with rubber or something I'm not sure but but anyway that's what we're gonna try so we'll get her all set up here we'll pour some gas in it we'll light it and we'll let it burn out and then let it uh, sit until it cools and we'll just see what it does all right folks so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same tube and actually the same hole uh, I pulled the other patch off that we had done and it actually you can see the hole here and it actually come off pretty easy so I mean it wasn't a good stick and I, like I said I know that this compound of this rubber is probably completely different it may not vulcanize at all but that's okay like I said we're just looking at the process so this is actually a piece of sandpaper and this is actually our gum that we cut out our patch material uh, so what it says is is to sand the tube first and then clean it with gasoline that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to use regular some gasoline like we're going to put in our cup there. We're going to clean it, and then I'm going to get it in here and get it clamped. And once I do that, then we will go ahead and uh, try to uh, set it on fire. All right. Okay, we just cleaned it with some gasoline, and I'm hoping it's going to dry here real quick before we try to do anything. Evaporate away. All right. 
there's our hole. You can probably see. So, basically it's going to lay in just like this. Now, you know, back then, a Model T in 1913 and maybe a little later in that area would not have had a really big tire on it. So, yeah, the scissors still cut. So, uh, this probably, you know, this would have been adequate for probably about any size tube back then. Now, I'm going to assume because this is sort of like a cloth backing that this is the back side and that's the front side. I hope that's right. So, we are going to stick it on there. over the hole Now the only problem I have now, let me clamp it tight, that way it'll transfer the heat. Uh, you know, I know the heat's going to rise from here, but it's going to heat these fins up and then eventually it's going to put some heat through there. It says to use the measuring cup to measure out how much gas, and I don't know how much gas because I don't have a measuring cup. Unless this is the cup they're, they're talking about. I don't see how it would come with anything else. So... I think we'll fill it up just a little under the top because they said it should burn for about 10 minutes. But uh, we got to make sure that we don't spill any anywhere because if it you know, gets away from there, the tube's gone, of course. But we're going to give it a try here and see what happens. I don't think uh, the floor of the uh, hardware store is where we want to do it at, so I think this is where we'll do it at. <laughs> Well, I didn't see a drop come out, but it looks like I might have <laughs> spit a little bit. That's all right. I'm used to catching stuff on fire. All right. Well, we're about halfway full. I think we're going to start. We'll try it right there. Just see what happens here. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it is burning. Oh, I forgot it. It's, it probably said no wind, too. Let me get a time. So we didn't think nothing about the wind, but, uh, you know that's that's part of the deal that's what we're trying to sort of do is what you know what they would have done back then and I'm sure you know if they was alongside the road with a tire pump trying to fix their tube using this method uh, you know the wind would have been a factor for them also so. and this is just straight 87 gasoline you know, current gasoline. I'm sure back then it was probably a little higher octane. So we may speed it up, but uh, we started at 2.05 and it is now 2.07, so we're about two minutes in. So we're just going to let it burn let it until it burns out, I guess. Make sure our tube don't catch on fire. I mean, it's looking okay. I don't know how long they used this system or how long 
they maybe possibly tried to use this system because uh, you know I don't know when the transition was when they went to the uh, the kind like we had you know looked at before which had its own heating source uh, this I could see you know people messing up and and accidentally uh, you know setting their car on fire and burning it to the ground and stuff like that yeah I'm beginning to wonder if we're gonna get a 10 minute burn out of that I probably should have filled it all the way up so we're three minutes in but that's okay we'll just uh, we'll let it burn we'll let it sit until it uh, cools completely down and then we'll go from there five minutes yeah I think we're gonna probably run out of fuel before we get our 10 minutes in but we'll be close One minutes, one more minute, and hopefully it'll burn out. And I have hit it right on the head. It's really close. Black has burned it off. It's probably uh, lead paint. <laughs> Never know. I'm not breathing it, folks. It's uh, it just burned out. It's been ten minutes, so we're gonna wait on it a little while and another ten or fifteen minutes. For it to cool down and everything and then we'll uh we'll check it out all right all right folks it's cooled off a little bit warm but not bad we're going to take it off and just see what it done i have no high expectations but then again it might have worked It did work. And worked well. So there you go. That's how you would patch one. I guess you can see where the rubber has melted away from the cloth material. And that's where it has vulcanized into the our inner tube, our rubber. That's actually a really, really nice patch job. I'm impressed. All right, all right, folks. Uh, I can't lie to you. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, how it turned out. I'll show you the the material. It's kind of weird because I I would have never thought that it would have turned black and squished out like that. Because the material you can see has the cloth on the back side, and it's like a rubbery green on this side and then uh, it also looks if you look around it well you'll see the green I guess that's the surface but if you, you'll also see it here maybe that's the sulfur you can see around the patch it sort of spread that green out but uh, really really neat uh, and <laughs> unbelievably it worked really well and I remember seeing patches that looked like that. I would actually was going to buy a different one, and but I wasn't sure how to use it. I wasn't sure whether they used kerosene or diesel or what would have went in it. 
uh, you know, TVO or uh, distillants or even alcohol. But, you know, getting this one with the paperwork and being able to uh, read the directions made things a lot, lot nicer. And I think I went a little over half and it actually worked out 10 minutes. That was another amazing thing. So I uh, guess it was meant to be. But can you vulcanize a new model too? Yes, this is out of a bicycle. So we did it. We didn't do it successfully with the other kit, but with this older kit, uh, we actually did it. So I, you know, I'm sure it's probably more material than it would be heat because, you know, you could heat it with anything. I guess you, you know, they make an electric setup, but that's the only one of these this style that I'd seen. Uh, it's the only company that I've seen make them. So anyway, that's that. Now we're going to do an update on a mystery tool. All right, folks. So this thing here was very puzzling of what it was and what it done uh, couldn't figure it out had part numbers on it no patent number anything like that now uh, this was sent to us from Eric Polston he's in uh, Florida okay, so I had a subscriber Owen 7888 send a link to one of these that were for sale and it was actually listed as a stapler and it had a brass tag on it that said stapling machine company so that was enough for me to be able to start doing some research and finding out what this really was I had a hard time finding any info on it uh, I finally found some foreign ads and was able to translate them into English and find out this was called a rocker is what it's called and why they call it that I don't know but here is the tool bulletin that shows exactly what it is. Okay, so this is made, I, I guess a lot of people have probably seen the uh, wooden crates that they would put vegetables in and, you know, fruit, well, fruits and vegetables, but it was my understanding that there was a lot of celery being grown around where uh, Eric had found this at. And if you look that picture, there is a little hook piece on the end of ours that's broke off. But it actually was made to hook the box or the, the wire loop in the box and just bend it around and tighten it down and fold it. So not much of a process, but you know, I remember I've opened and closed these boxes before by hand. And I, you know, I guess it, it wasn't bad. I don't remember it as being a bad uh, or hard to do or anything like that. But if you think about it and you're doing hundreds of them an hour, you know, it would probably, your fingers would be hurting. So that's what this tool was for. And uh, I guess it's, uh, it just pulls the wire through and bends it. And that's it. And it's called a rocker for closing rock fasteners. Well, maybe that's why it's called a rocker is because it's a rock fastener and all bound boxes and crates so solve the mystery so there is another website somewhere that was looking had pictures of one of these looking to see what it was they didn't have any info on it either so uh, if anybody notices that website on the internet let them know that it's a rocker all right well appreciate everybody watching and we'll have more coming up with the hardware store. Bye.